Jonathan has hit a home run and has now stolen one. Here's the 0-2. Swung on. There goes the deep left. It is high. It is far. It is gone. He's done it again. It's unbelievable. He's done it again. I have run out of superlatives. He is the Sanchino. Gary is <laughs> scary. He hits another home run, and the Yankees have an 8-4 lead. High fly ball, right center field. Marisnik back to the triangle. Long, long, long run. He won't get it. And the Red Sox walk off with the win. How do you like that? Big puppy again. David Ortiz, an extraordinary final season in the making. What a moment and a career of extraordinary moments. He's done it again. MLB Network's coverage of Major League Baseball brings us to the Sunshine State and Marlins Park in Miami. Tonight we wrap up this three-game series between the New York Mets and the Miami Marlins. Two great hitters lead their teams to battle next on MLB Network. Dan Straley will do the pitching in game three of the series. What's your take on him, H? Well, it's been an interesting season so far. He's pitched much better on the road. His results and his numbers at home have not been good. So maybe this is the game that we're going to see him pivot that around, change that trend, and start to throw better at home. In is Curtis Granderson. He drove in his club's only run a night ago. Set to deal. Here's the 3 1. And that misses ball four. So, not the start he was looking for tonight as he walks the leadoff hitter on five pitches. Batting second. Shortstop. And Here now is his Drupal Cabrera. And the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. A runner at first with no outs here. And this runs inside, and that looked like it got him pretty good. Wow, I'm not sure if he was looking past this guy to the slugger coming up or just lost focus. But now the big bat steps to the plate with a great RBI opportunity. Coming to the plate now, Yoannis Cespedes. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right-handed pitching this season. And there's a pitch that just misses the inside corner. This Marlins ball club, Harold Reynolds, as they begin play here tonight, they come in looking to make it two in a row as they were winners last time out. Yeah, man. I mean, you really want to end the homestand on a great note. This is the last game at home for a really long road trip coming up. So fans are going to have to watch you on TV or listen to it on the radio. You want to give them something to kick them off with, and that is a win today. Hit back up the middle to Gordon for one. On to first, and Cespedes grounds into a double play. And now a chance to meet the Mets. What's the key for them tonight, Harold? Matt, this is a scary lineup. They've got power and they have speed. They score runs in all different ways. They hit the ball in the ballpark and they score on balls in the gap when you have a run at first base. That's what speed, power combination can do. This is a very tough lineup. Here's the third baseman David Wright. He went hitless last night in a game where his guys could push across only one score. Miami, Miami, Miami. And he'll just make him throw one over here. Three and one. He's set. Here's the three one. Line toward the gap in left center. And there's a base hit as the runner will score from third, and that gives the Mets a 1 nothing lead. And he'll get in there safely. I'm sure that that first run comes as a relief more than anything. They could only muster right one run the entire previous game, so James to notch that run Bruce. early takes the pressure off a little bit. And with a man standing at second, they're hoping that's just the beginning. In now, Jay Bruce takes a look at one catching the outside corner. 
It'll be interesting if he comes in the zone aggressively again here. With the base open, he doesn't have to. And this one's chopped foul right at home plate. Again, he sends it out of play. Another payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, and that ends the inning. Mets get one on the double by David Wright. Bottom of the first coming up from Miami. And the Mets have an early 1-0 lead. Seth Lugo gets the assignment for the rubber match in this series. Harold, what do you got? Well, Matt, he's got to be feeling pretty good about himself. He finally got his first win of the season after failing a couple times to get to that point. Let's see if he can go back-to-back -back wins now. Here's D. Gordon now. We show you what he did in May versus what he's done so far at the plate in June. Here's the one and one pitch. Line shot to first, and there's one away. Time now for a glance at the Marlins lineup card in this one. Dan, who do we keep an eye on? You know, I think everyone should keep an eye on Christian Yelich. He's got a five-game hitting streak going. If you've got to start those big streaks somewhere, I like the way he's swinging the bat right now. Great approach, very comfortable. Let's see if that streak continues today. In is Christian Yelich. He's currently tied for second place on the team in home runs. One and one, here it is. Grounded back up the middle. Walker's got it. Throw on to first, two gone. Jim Carlos Stanton now. No one aboard for him, and two gone here in the first. He's set, and the 2 1 pitch. Swing and a miss way behind the big fastball. You know, when you're facing a top of the line pitcher like this, He's going to be down around the knees like that more often than not. The key is punishing whatever mistakes he makes, but so. And the throw is in time to get him to retire the side. Miami down in order. They're down 1 0. Here's Neil Walker, hitting a little over 250 coming into action in this one. He's ready. Now the payoff pitch. Liner towards second. Throw to first will be in time, and there's one gone here to start the second. All right, time for majestic defensive alignment for the Marlins. In this day and age, when teams are moving all over the place playing the shift, these guys are old school, very traditional. You don't see the shift applied very often to this club. Here's Lucas Duda now. At the moment, he's got a 270 batting average for the season. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Outside, 2 and 1. We're in the second, 1 0 Mets early on. Right on the corner, 2 and 2. Into the windup, here comes the 2 2 pitch. That's lifted the other way out to left. Ozuna giving chase. He gets there and makes a fine running play for the second out. Here's Travis the catcher, Travis Darno. Batter pitcher numbers against Dan Straley. He's gone two for five. Bases are empty here with two men out. And oh, able to lay off the fastball away here. Two and one now. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Yelich is under it. And the inning is over. Mets go down one, two, three. We played an inning and a half. It's one to nothing. Now in the box, Justin Bohr. And as you can see, he's had some troubles here in his own ballpark. That's something he'll look to improve upon in this one.
set. Here's the 3 1. A swing, and this ball is blasted to right field. Nothing's going to keep this one in the ballpark. Gone all the way into the upper deck. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. Number 18 for him on the campaign, and with it, the Marlins are back even now at 1 and 1. Certainly a tape measure shot there as we take a look at it with our show track technology. 111 miles an hour was the exit velocity, so it comes as no surprise that it carried as far as it did. Into the box now, Marcelo Zuna. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. Bruce racing back, but he's not going to get this one. It's into the gap, and he's in there safely. He's got a double. As we take a look at the replay here, you can see that it was a hanging changeup. Nice job of staying back on it, and he's able to tattoo it for a double. And you know, if that pitch would have supplied more velocity, it might have been out of here. He hit it right on the screws. Into the box, JT Real Muto. And a curveball's by him that time as he falls behind now, one and two. One and two, here it comes. And here's a ball hit in the air. Cabrera ranging into the outfield. He can't get to it. This one's down. Two strike hitting. Man, you love it when guys are able to fight the ball Having off time. and get a hit. Third, right there, he fun. fights it off Martin. and flips it over the middle infielder's head. Now at the plate, Martin Prado. He's been one of their big run producers this year, currently third on the team in RBIs. Ready on three and one, here it comes. A good knee high changeup taken for a strike. Hoping to send him packing, pitch on its way. Liner toward right center, and that finds the outfield grass for a base hit. Ozuna rounds the corner and is headed home. A runner from second crosses the plate. Well, he comes up with the big RBI hit right there and puts him ahead in this ball game. If they can keep a lead, get to that bullpen, they got a shot to win this game. Stepping in now, Adani Echevarria. And that misses two and one. HR, these Mets as they enter play here tonight. Despite that loss last time out, they're still on a pretty nice run as they'd won six in a row prior to that. And Matt, you always want to win two of the three games. I mean, today is a big game because you walk away and you start adding up those numbers in the series. You go, we won two out of three there. That's the goal for every team to win two out of three in the series. And that'll score the runner from third as they'll open up a three to one lead. The pitcher, Dan Strayler, steps up to the plate in a sacrifice situation. So let's see if that is indeed on right here. And they like to have the pitcher bunt with one gun as he puts this one down. One there on to first, but not in time as he's in there ahead of the throw. Now batting. Ready for another chance. D Gordon 0 for 1 here in the early going. One and two now. Mm -hmm. Just reached back and threw a high fastball right by him. He didn't stand a chance. Chop fouled over towards the coaching box. Here he comes again. One two. Grounded to short. Scooped up on the backhand. Throw not in time as he's able to leg it out. You want to talk about speed? Watch him here on this isolation replay. Is he flying or what? I love how smooth he runs. And he just burst it down the line. In now, Christian Yelich. 
squared that one up just a little late. Oh, that looked like a pretty good pitch to hit. It's a little bit late, so he might have been just fooled just a tad bit, just enough not to square it up. And another foul ball. Three runs already home here. And a breaking ball runs in and gets him. And I doubt there was any intent behind that. As a manager, you never really want to put a man on by a hit by pitch, but you absolutely hate to have it happen when it loads the bases. Now the pitcher is looking a little shaky, and the threat of a big inning is very real. Digging in to try it again, Giancarlo Stanton. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. 3 2 with the bases loaded. And he strikes him out here, so he's able to stop the bleeding a bit as this side is retired. So all in all, they're fortunate to give up just three in the inning as they wind up escaping the bases loaded jam. We play two full. It's the Marlins three and the Mets one. Now batting, Seth Lugo, nine, one and two do up. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. Hitters count now. Here's the two and one. Takes a fastball on the inside corner. High in the air out to center field. Yelich is under it. And that's the first out of the inning. So one gone now as we give you a look at where these two teams find themselves entering play in the National League's Eastern Division race. Here's the center fielder Curtis Granderson. No official at bat for him but he has scored a run in this one. A one and one count. Here's the pitch. Line to the right side. And that will fall in front of Stanton. It's a base hit. You can't throw a ball high enough over this guy's eyes. He is a bad ball hitter, and if you throw it up, he'll just climb the ladder with the pitcher. Into the box now as Dribble Cabrera. He pulls this one into right. Stanton is there, two down. And he will scurry back to first as he'll think twice about trying to move up. Stepping in and ready for another shot. Joanna Cespedes. 0 for 1 here in the early going. Third inning here. 3 to 1 our score. And this one gets away. And he'll make it into scoring position here with two away as that'll be scored a wild pitch. Well the intent there with that two strike pitch was obviously to get him to fish for something he couldn't do a whole lot with but there's the risk that comes with that as well. If you don't execute or your catcher can't handle it very well you give up free bases. So he threw the slider darting away to him two times in a row. Now I don't think he'll go for it again. I'm looking for something. And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three and that will retire the side. Met strand one and it remains a 3-1 ball game. Standing in Justin Bohr and he's off to a hot start in this one homered his first time around. And he'll come back with one in the dirt as the count moves to two and one now. Here's the pitch. Ground ball sent back up the middle. Fielded cleanly by Walker. And he will whip this one over to first in time for the out. The batter, left fielder. Here's Marcelo Zuna. He scored a run after stroking a double in his first at bat. Bases are empty, one man out. And a fastball blew it right by him, and there are two down. Now batting, catcher. Digging in for his second at bat, JT Realmuto. He singled his last time up. 
in front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. Oh, he definitely got away with the changeup right there. He hung that one. But the good news is you got him to pull it foul. Now you come back after him here with another pitch. Bruce has a read on it, and that's the third out. Former cover boy David Wright leads things off when we come back. It's the Marlins three and the Mets one. Here's the third baseman David Wright. An RBI double is what he was credited with his first time around. Ready on one and two. Hit back up the middle. Played on the backhand. And an off balance throw is in time as he takes one away. Wow. So with one away, let's punch up the graphic and show you the pitch speed comparison for the two starters here in the fourth inning. And both of these guys will get it up to over 90, as you can see, 94 for one, 91 for the other. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Halfway to 100 pitches. Here it is. And Bruce will lay off that one. He's aboard. It's ball four. Looked like he might have gotten squeezed a little bit right there. And you know he's talking to himself in his head about it. That kind of stuff goes both ways, though. Hitters get their fair share of crummy calls going against them, too. Standing in now, Neil Walker. And that is just past his outstretched glove, and that ought to be a base hit. Now batting. Striding in once again, Lucas Duda. He's 0 for 1 thus far. He's set. Here's the 3 1. And there's ball four as this one gets away a bit. And this is the kind of thing that's been Not happening to him all Captain. season long. He'll Travis cruise for a Darnell. while, hitting his spots, and all of a sudden the wheels come off and he struggles. We'll see if he can recover here. Three to one is our score here in inning number four. <laughs> Favorable call in there for a strike. With two strikes now and a runner at first, do you go for the strikeout or are you still looking for the double play ball? Well, Matt, I think a lot of that depends on the type of pitcher that you are. If you're a power pitcher, you can go ahead and ride a fastball up in the zone, but if you're a guy that induces a lot of ground balls with a sink. Now, meanwhile, this ball's going to get through, and that's a base hit. One run scores. Well, that's almost like an old school approach right there. You don't see it very often. Now, it falls away, he takes it away. And drives in the run. Take what they give you. The runner from third scored easy on that play. Stepping in now. Seth Lugo. Now a bunt attempt here. And good hustle to get over and tag him for the out. And that lead disappears with it as this is now a 3-3 ball game. Sometimes for a first baseman, the best thing you do is just go ahead and tag the guy like that. Hey, there's a lot more that can go wrong when you try to throw to the pitcher or the second baseman covering. One and two now. A strike away now from getting out of this mess. Sometimes pitching is all about minimizing, right? So keeping it to two runs across in the inning would be huge. Nope. And two and two. Hey, two walks in this inning already, so he can't expect to stay out there much longer if he puts somebody else on. We'll see if he can find it. Even at two balls and two strikes, here's the pitch. Look out. Don't want to hit him there. It's full three and two. For the guy in the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. 
definitely laboring at the moment. Boy, not close again. His third walk of the inning as that misses for ball four. So that's the second walk he's worked in this one. Yeah, and that seems to be a popular approach when this guy steps in. He can really hurt you with one swing, so I think the idea is mostly not to let this one guy beat you, Matt. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. In now as Dribble Cabrera. Fastball called strike. One and two. Looking to leave him loaded. Look out. That one almost got away from him. Two and two now. We can't hear it from here, obviously, but I think someone in the dugout just yelled, wear it, because that could have been a run. This one's flared out toward left. Ozuna is there. And that ends the inning. So they wind up with two in the inning, but it could have been a lot worse as they leave the bases loaded. To the bottom of inning number four we go, and we are all tied at three apiece. At the plate, Martin Prado looking to follow up the RBI single from his first at bat. He's set. Here's the 3 1. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. Granderson going back. Gone to lead off the inning. So a solo shot here to left center field. Sixth home run on the season for him as they take the lead four to three. Wow, that's what a pitcher gets for not putting what he thought was a bad call in the rear view mirror. I think he was still fuming and didn't get the pitch where he wanted it. The result? A reason to be even more mad. Into the box, a Danny Echevarria. And he puts it on the ground to second. On to first, so a good bounce back pitch there as he gets the ground ball for the first out. Now batting from pitcher. Now to the plate, Dan Straley. One run in and one gone so far this inning. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Now a swing and a fly ball. But this will wind up being a foul ball. And the slider gets him swinging. Two gone. Good job of making him chase a pitch for the strikeout there. Yeah, Matt, the that's the advantage of getting ahead in the count. You can really force hitters D. to expand their zone and protect. And when they're in that mode, getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Now a foul tip that's held onto with the plate, and the count moves to 1-2 and two now. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss as he pulled the string on the breaking ball, and the inning is over. One for the Marlins on the solo shot. We played four. It's now four to three, Miami. Here's Juana Cespedes. He comes in 0 for 2 thus far. Two and one now to Cespedes. Leaves a slider up high, but it's taken for a strike. Set to deal on two and two. Hit in the air to straightaway center. Yelich is under it. He's got it one away. The third baseman, number five. Digging in once again, David Wright. One for two with a double on the ledger so far. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Ready with the one one pitch. And flirting with danger on a changeup that missed high for a ball. It's one thing to get hit around, but it's far worse when you're getting yourself into trouble by not throwing strikes. Every pitcher's been there, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating or unacceptable. Due next is the dangerous Jay Bruce. Fastball is taken for a strike, and he runs it full three and two. Count is full. Here's the pitch. 
Pitch swung on and hit in the air. Falling for it, Yelich. Two down. The right fielder, number 19. Jay Here's Jay Bruce, Bruce now. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. Hitters count now. Here's the 2 and 1. Swing and a miss out in front of a changeup. Beautiful changeup. Got him out front with that swing right there. That's what a changeup will do. Just keep you off balance. Bruce in the air to right, but that'll hook foul and back up into the seats. Now another 2-2. Two -two. Hard on the ground towards short. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Mets. Still down a run, it's 4-3. With Harold Reynolds and Dan Plesak, Matt Vaskersian with you as the left-handed hitting Christian Yelich settles in to start out the inning. He's set. Here comes the 1-1 down the first baseline. But a foul ball, one and two now. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first out. I'll tell you, he's showing no signs of tiring right now. Still looks razor sharp from what I can tell, so I think he might last a while longer if he can keep this up. Giancarlo Stanton now, 0 for 2 on his line thus far. Set to deliver on 2 and 1. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Cespedes is there. He's got it, and there are two down now. The batter, first baseman, Justin Bohr. So striding forward now, Justin Bohr comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. And a good comeback there. It's three and one. Four runs, six hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. And a full count now, three and two. Matt, I thought he might be in jeopardy of walking the guy here for the first time in this game. Went down 3 0. Looking at a fastball to end the inning. One, two, three go the Marlins. But they hold on to a 4 3 lead. Severino Gonzalez takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Number 48, Severino Gonzalez. Ready for another chance. Neil Walker, one for two on his line so far in the game. And good patience to hold back on the curveball in the dirt. It's full now, three and two. Hey, I know the idea is to try to get the guy to swing on a 2-2 pitch, right? But that one was nope. so low, I don't know anybody that would have swung at that pitch. Tough pitch to lay off, but he did, and it's ball four, First so the leadoff hitter is aboard to start the sixth. Lucas Duda. Here's Lucas Duda now. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. The 1-1 one, one pitch. And that one stayed too low, apparently. Boy, not exactly what you'd like as a pitcher. One of the keys is to minimize your pitches, attack the strike zone early, a lot of deep counts, and working himself into a lot of trouble. Looks at a curveball on the outside corner. Look, Matt, this guy's got a great sinker. Here's the key. He's got a runner on first base. This is where you can get that ground ball double play. Make him chase that hard sinker and hit it into the dirt and turn one over for it. And a good effort on the dive that time, but this will get by him for a base hit. A lot of base hits up the middle. Set your sights up the alleys and try I'll to take it back the up man. the middle hard like he did Happy. right here. Nice job. Travis Darno. Standing in now, Travis Darno. Now a bunt attempt here. And they put the tag on him for the out. But meanwhile, both runners are able to move up a base. Sometimes for a first baseman, no, the best thing you do is just go ahead and tag the guy like that. Hey, there's a lot more that can go wrong when you try to throw to the pitcher or the second baseman cover. Up. 
Look out, a fastball up near his dome, and that'll wake you up a bit. Well, that'll wake everyone up. Anytime you buzz the tower like that, there's reason for people to start getting a little bit edgy. And the curveball bounces here, but a good job behind the plate to keep it at arm's length. Looking for the K, here's the pitch. Stung into the gap in right center for what should be extra bases. In to score, the runner from third. And the run is in to score from second. It's a 5-4 to four game. And he is in to second base with a two-run double. Always nice to get some run production from the bottom of your order, right? That double brings in two runs, and the top of the order is coming up here. This could really be a big inning. Into the box now, Curtis Granderson. And he takes ball four again. And they clearly just don't want any part of him in this one. What's the saying? Uh, when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. Well, the guy on the bump obviously hasn't heard that one. Here now is his Drupal Cabrera. He comes into this at bat 0 for 2 with the hit by pitch. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Down low, two balls and a strike. A lot of times you see guys get too aggressive and try to do too much at the plate with guys on, but right here he's doing a great job of waiting on the right pitch. Got himself ahead in the count now. Line hard toward right center. Yelich is there now, and he has it, two gone. The left fielder, number 50. Here's the left fielder, Ioannis Cespedes. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch. Breaking ball snaps in there for a called strike two. Oh, he hung him one right there. Curveball right down the middle. Those balls go a long way. He must have been looking for something else. There's a swing, and he sends a ball high in the air into left field. Ozuna ranging back. He's there to make the play, and that'll retire the side. So two runs on two base hits, no errors, and a couple of men left. The five, six, and seven slots do up in the bottom of inning number six. It's the Mets five and the Marlins four. Your Fernando Salas will come on in relief here and appear in game number, number 25 59. on the year so far. Fernando Salas. Here's Marcelo Zuna, one for two with a double on his line thus far. Ready with the one and one. Down the third baseline. But this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. And now pitch on the way. And he'll stay alive here as this is chopped foul at the plate. It'll remain one and two. Now here it comes. Now a swing and a weak little line drive over to first. But an easy play there at first as that becomes the first out of the inning. Ready for another shot now. JT Real Muto. He's one for two in the ball game. Looking to put him away. Here's the 0-2. This is line to left. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Back to back line drives. Now the first guy was out, but man, they're swinging the bat Third pretty good. These two guys 14, saw him pretty good. Let's Martin see what happens now. Otto. In now, Martin Prado. He swings and grounds it to short. Oh, and Cabrera bobbles it. And a nice job to stay with it that time and get the second out of the inning. Had to protect there with two strikes, and he just got it off the end of the bat. Not much of a problem for the infield at that point. Stepping in now, Adani Echevarria. And this ball's chopped foul at the plate, and that'll hold the count at 0-2. Trying to hold the lead, here's the delivery. In the dirt, 
The throw will go to third, and he is safe at third as he moves up on what's likely to be ruled a wild pitch. That can be a tough read as a runner on second to see if the ball has gotten away enough to move to third. You have to be sure you can make it. He was there, and now he's only 90 feet away. Four runs, seven hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. Swing and a little tapper. That winds up foul. That's probably not what he wants to do with two strikes right there with the fastball. He was fortunate he just fouled it off. And this is fouled at the plate. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up. And that'll be a base hit and an RBI as well as it ties our ball game at five and five. Two out, two strikes, down to the last strike of the inning, and he's able to hang in there and drive the ball for a base hit. Good job of battling right there. Derek Dietrich will look for some two out magic here as he'll pinch hit with two gone and a runner at first. Josh Edgen takes over here with a runner at first and two gone in the inning. Two out with the man at first. One and two now as this catches the outer half. Good pitch right there from the reliever. Tough for hitters to do much with pitches in that location unless they're looking for it. And he swings on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. Here's another one two. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Matt, I like this at bat from the pitcher here. You know, he could have mailed it in. He had two outs. He walks to the plate. But now he's making him work. You gotta love that. Well, that's back-to-back -back breaking balls. He's able to foul that one off. Will they come back with a third? And we'll see another pitch here as this ball's chopped foul at home plate. The 2-2 two -two one more time. Now he gets on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. And he'll stay alive here, but just barely as this ball's chopped foul at the plate, and the count holds it two and two. That's four foul balls in a row. He's battling, no doubt. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. Marlins get one here on a couple of hits. Seventh inning coming up, and we are all tied five to five. Welcome back to South Florida. All tied at five as you take a look at the game summary through the first six innings of play. Your attention, please. Now New pitcher to tell you about, and it's the sidearming right-hander Brad Ziegler that gets Brad the assignment. Ziegler. Here's the third baseman, David Wright. He's working on a one for three thus far. Looked like he was on that one, but it's one and two. It looks like he just swung right over that sinker right there. What is so hard about a sinker, you have to almost go underneath it and scoop it. You got one of those swings that goes over the top, you're never going to hit him. And there's out number one. Right fielder number 19, Jay Bruce. Ready once again, Jay Bruce. Lifetime versus this pitcher. One for six. One out, nobody on. in for a strike and he jumps ahead one and two now. The one and two pitch. And the slider is low and inside as he just about got him there. Pretty good pitch and a great take there. There's not a lot you could do with that slider breaking down and unless you can catch it way out front and hook it down the line. You see a lot of swinging misses on those. On to first and there were two down. Now batting. Second baseman, Neil Here's Neil Walker. Walker. A hit in two tries so far. Here's the one and one pitch. Slider just off the black there, and it's to two and one now. Backdoor breaking ball just missed right there. It's such an effective pitch if you can hit the corner with it, but no dice this time. 
on to first and this will remain a tie ball game as the inning is Ladies over. Mets go down one two three. This ball game right. still tied five all. Digging in to try it again. D Gordon. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. Two and one now to Gordon. Change up stayed low that time for ball three. And it looks now like a right hander has begun to get loose in the Mets bullpen. Liner toward right center. And that's going to be a base hit. So the possible go ahead run is on here to start the home half of the seventh. Boy, that big lead off hit right there really sets the table for them with an opportunity to take the lead the rest of the game. Standing in now, Christian Yelich. Out in front as this is pulled foul into the seats. Well, he got what he's looking for. He just got out in front of it right there. Oh, they pulled the string on a good change up there as he swings and misses, and he's set down on strikes for the second time tonight. That was some nice execution on that pitch. Spotted it nicely down around the bottom of the zone. And when you do that, especially with two strikes, not a lot of guys are going to hurt you. You're going to get a lot of ground balls and swings and misses down there. Runner goes for second. Ball line fouled as that will get over the Marlins dugout. Possible go-ahead runs on first, one away. And this is going to be a foul ball. Ball two. Seems like he's throwing everything at him. The kitchen sink, and he just fouled him off. So he tried to throw something right there and make him chase, and he didn't. So I don't know where he goes from here. Swing and a miss, strike three, the throw. And it's far too late as he steals second with ease. So he can't make contact there on strike three. But meanwhile, the runner on first takes second here with two men away. Digging in once again, Justin Bohr. Perhaps he can drive another one out of the park just like he did back in the second. Strike two called, and it's even at two. He's set. Here's the 2 2. Hit in the air to shallow center. Granderson is under it. And that's the third out. So no runs on a hit here, no errors, one man left on. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now, and we are all tied five to five. Here's Lucas Duda now. And this tie ball game is a battle of the bullpens now, and I'm sure you're enjoying that, Dan. Bullpens are such a big part of baseball now, Matt. All these teams have such good seventh, eighth, and ninth inning guys. It all boils down to whose bullpen is better. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. And the changeup just missed the inside corner. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Won't go after the 2 1 sinker, and it's three balls and a strike now. You see a right handed batter waiting next, but he could very well be pulled back as the situation dictates. And he lays off ball four. Now the potential go ahead run is on base here. Man, when the game is tied, the last thing now you batting. can afford to do is Catherine. walk the leadoff hitter. Got to focus Darn on up. getting that ground ball now. Time is called and we'll have a pinch runner at first and that'll be a wise decision as he's the potential go ahead run. Stepping in and ready for another shot Travis Darno a hit in two official trips to the plate to this point in the ballgame. Ligaris run pitches a cold strike the throw. there from Gordon and they got him at second base. Hey not every catcher can make that throw so that was pretty special. Benito Santiago made throwing from his knees famous when he was playing but it's a really tough one to pull off. That's a long throw without any legs underneath you so hats off to him on that one.
Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. On the ground to the left side. Up with it now is Prado. Pro gets him two down. Now batting. Time to give you a look now at the numbers for our two starting pitchers and really nothing to write home about on either line as neither guy was able to last even six innings. Jose Reyes will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. Number seven, Jose Reyes. Two out, nobody on. And he lays off ball four. Now the potential go ahead run is on base here. Center fielder number three. Striding in once again, Granderson. Curtis Granderson. His career numbers in this matchup a three for 12 line. Oh, and two count. Here's the pitch. And there goes Reyes. In the dirt, and now let's see. Oh, and this is low, and it won't be dug out, so he picked the right pitch to run on there, and he's in at second base with a stolen bag. Look out. That one almost got away from him. Two and two now. And that changeup didn't tempt anybody and misses for ball three. Wow, this is a pretty good at bat right here from down in the count 0 and 2 to work the count back to 3 and 2. And he's seen a lot of pitches too. Line drive to left. And he dives to make a spectacular catch. What a play there to end the inning. Worth a second look here as this is a beauty to end the inning. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. Juan Ligaris will stay in the ball game as he'll take over at first base. Addison Reed is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Now pitching for the New York Mets, number 43, Anderson Reed. Here's Marcelo Zuna. He lined out in his last trip, so looking for better fortunes here. T.J. Rivera is going to come on as a defensive now replacement now as he takes number over at first base. T.J. Rivera. The set and the 1 1 pitch. And he's in front of a tight little slider that time. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. And he wasn't going to hit that one with an or the strikeout, and there's one gone. Really good late bite on that slider right there. The best ones have that late action that just starts at the last minute. They're so tough to get the bat on, and when you've got that good slider going, it's a great strikeout pitch. Into the box, JT Real Muto. Keeping it down here as it's to one and two. Ready to deliver the one and two. The one two offering looked like a slider that time, but it's two and two. Here's the pitch on two and two. Chop foul over towards the dugout. Another try at two two. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. Another 2 2 offering lifts it into the air to shallow center. Granderson comes on now and makes the catch in shallow center for round number two. Third baseman number Martin 14. Martin Prado now. Martin career history with Prado. Addison Reed. Two hits in seven tries. The 2 2 pitch. Hit hard but foul toward first, so he'll come back and line it up again. Bases are empty here with two men out. In the air down the left field line and deep. And eight innings have come and gone now as the inning is over. Miami down in order. Our score holds at five apiece. Now the famous neon of Ocean Drive in Miami Beach. Welcome back to baseball on MLB Network. 
Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area, so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Brian Ellington is These in out of the bullpen now as he'll be inserted now into the number in six spot six following spot. the double switch. A.J. Ellis is into the ball game as well as he'll now slide into the pitcher's in spot, ball. hitting ninth now number on 16. the double switch. A.J. Ellis. Pitch on the way. Lifted the other way to left center. Ozuna is under it. He's got it one away. The left fielder number 50. Here's the left fielder, Yoannis Espinosa. 0 for 4 with a strikeout thus far. One and one. Here it comes. There's a changeup over the outside corner. Bases are empty. One man out. And oh, a big rip at the curveball, but he didn't get it, and he becomes the second casualty of the inning. That's a pretty sad attempt at hitting a baseball okay, right there. No five. doubt he was completely right. fooled because that was a curveball, and it looked like he was late on a curveball. That tells me he gave up on it right till the very end, and obviously there was nothing he could do at that point. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Line towards center field. Yelich. Is going to have room out there as he puts this away to retire the side. Down in order go the Mets. This remains a five-all ball game. Here's Echeverria now. He singled earlier, making him one for two to this point. Here's the one and one pitch. And he'll just get a piece here as this is chopped foul at home plate. Here's the one and two. Good job to spoil that one away and he stays alive. Again a one two. That misses and we're even at two and two. And the pitch. Swing and a liner. But this is a foul ball. He's set. Here's the two two. Swung on and hit in the air to left. Cespedes is there. And that's the first out of the inning. The catcher, number 17, A.J. Ellis. In now is A.J. Ellis. One out, nobody on. Sent on the ground out to second. Gloved by Walker. And he'll whip this one over to first, and he gets his man for the second out. The batter, number nine. Second baseman. Here's D. Gordon D. now. Career Gordon. history with Addison Reed. Not great. He's one for eight. And the pitch on two and one. Trying to go the other way. This is looped out toward third. But this won't get past the gold lover right as he spears it at third to end the inning. One, two, three, go the Marlins. This ball game still tied five all. Here's Jay Bruce now. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. Ready to deal. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Takes a look down at the knees for a strike. Hit hard to the right side. Foul. Well, I think he's trying to get that two-strike fastball out of the zone. Just caught too much of the plate right there. Fortunately, he fouled it off instead of putting it in the seat. Now he lifts a high pop-up, drifting into foul territory on the right side. And there's the first out. Now batting second baseman. Digging in the switch Walker. hitter, Neil Walker. He's working on a one for three thus far. Now the pitch. In there, and it's even now, two and two. Bases are empty, one man out. And here's a ball hit in the air. Calling for it, Bohr makes the play, and there are two gone now. Now batting. The first baseman stepping up now T.J. Rivera and you see that average below the dreaded Mendoza line. 
ready with the one one pitch takes a fastball on the inside corner two out nobody on and he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time and it's back to even now at two and two he executed that one two curveball pretty well I think that's right where he wanted it to end up but he couldn't get him to chase at it we'll see what they go with now after that didn't work out Travis Darno would be next and he lays off ball four now the potential go ahead run is on base here up next for the Mets catcher Here's the Travis catcher Travis Darno and we'll see if they can make him pay for the two out walk always considered a big no no of course. And he misses two and one. Now the two one. And he lays off again, ball three. Well, this has been a good job to work the count from 0-1 to 3-1, and, and now he's really in the driver's seat to see a heater that he can do something with. Takes a knee-high fastball. All right, 3-2 count with two outs. The runner on first will be moving, so we'll see what happens. There are a lot of possible outcomes with this game. And he strikes him out here for out number three, so after a scoreless top half, they'll have a chance to win it here in the bottom half. Mets leave one. Our score holds at five apiece. In is Christian Yelich. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. Crowd gets up for the 3 2. Swing and a soft liner, and that'll make him 1 for 4 in this one. With that, the Marlins get a good start to the inning with their leadoff man aboard. And he needed extra well, innings to get it, but there's his first hit of the game. And that'll keep the hit streak alive and kicking. Well, he had a lot of opportunities. You knew eventually he was going to get a hit as hot as he's been. But to extend that streak, what a remarkable streak he is on. Ichiro Suzuki. Into the box now. Giancarlo Stanton and he puts it on the ground to second and that's in for a base hit finally make him one for five now and they keep rolling here their runners at the corners with still nobody out first two hitters of the inning go back to back singles and now they're first and third this has the makings of a big inning Matt Dendecker will come on now and pinch run here number 15 Matt Dendecker And here's ball four on the intentional pass as that'll now load the bases here and set up the force at the plate. Now batting. Striding in, Marcelo Zuna. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. The one and one pitch. This ball's grounded foul. This is where you got to pitch to the strikeout. Infield's drawn in. You don't want contact. You want to make him swing and miss. Throw the nastiest stuff you have. Don't know how you lay off that one, but he did, and it's two and two. Oh, that was a pitch he wanted right there. That, that's a situation you can't go to two balls because if you go to three, you know you're going to throw the ball right down the middle. This pitch right here, it, it, everything hinges on this pitch. Base is loaded, and you know he's got to come to you. Now he's got to throw a strike right here. Extra. Ryan Ramon Cabrera will be called upon Attention here to hit Marlins. with the game on the Number line. 37, Ramon Cabrera. Big spot here. Possible winning run at third. Two down. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Ready with another two-strike offering. Scorch to third. And that is through into left as he delivers. It's a base hit. And the winning run is across to score. Well, the way things unfolded, you kind of had a sense that this thing was going to end in dramatic fashion, and that's exactly what happened. A walk-off for the win? Wow.
And the Marlins got a big lift here tonight from the contributions of this man, Martin Prado. Picture perfect there. He's our tops player of the game. Hey, you could probably make an argument for a couple of other guys, too, but it seemed like he had the most to do with his guys getting the win here. And tonight's one-run game comes to an end 6-5, to five, the final. Brian Ellington earns his third win of the year in relief. So that just about does it for Harold Reynolds, the lefty Dan Plesak, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network. Here now is our final line score tonight. First for the victorious Miami Marlins, six runs on 12 hits. 20, 25 years from now, you're going to want to say, I was there when Ken Griffey Jr. made his home debut. So don't forget that on Monday night. There's a drive into the gap in left center field and deep left center field, and Henderson's not going to get to it. It's off the base of the wall, and Griffey to second base in his first major league at bat, a ringing double off the 375 marker, and we have seen that all spring. Welcome to the show, Ken Griffey Jr. One ball and one.